Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and this video is part 18 in the continuing series of taking a game called Voxel slash Sokoban, putting it into making it work in GameMaker Studio 2, and then porting it over into our own custom C++ engine running with the SFML library on top or below it or using it. So why am I so excited? Last part was exciting, part 16 and 17, because we're actually doing the game after all this hard work. And so we've done the game twice. We've completed it, right? We made it in Game Maker. Now we've made it in our C++ engine. So again, just to finish up, what are we doing? For those of you who haven't been following along or just watching this for whatever reason, we're taking this a guy pushes blocks around, and now he has goals to push them, and then you know try to figure out how many steps it took the person to solve the puzzle. 720p resolution, 60 by 60 tiles. So what are we doing in this video? Uh, we're going to polish up the wind condition. We've established that we can determine the wind condition, but we have to do something about it now. And then part of that is determining what is the best score that's ever been made on this. And we're going to maintain a file that maintains this. So we're going to show up basically on the buttons in the main menu, and then in the game itself, we're going to have some updates. Go, you got the new best score, or you tied the best score, and, and that kind of thing when you go and you solve the puzzles. And if all of this works out, I'm very fairly confident, two standard deviations, confident that we are going to have a party and we are going to celebrate the fact that we are completely done with the game at this point. So what do we need to start tinkering with? So I have the voxel game level room open right now. And so way, way back, we set up so that the room can know what level it is. Because, uh, let's see, if we can go back to the main menu room to see that one, right? Where's the game main voxel, blah, blah, blah. Where's main menu room? Here we go. And so when we create this, we say, okay, set up a fade, op fade object that uses this new level room as you know, the object it is. So pool, level one room.txt, right? Very cool stuff. And so we pass along a 1 for level 1, a 2 for level 2, and a 3 for level 3. So we can use this now here, because it comes in here to oops, comes in here to the constructor, and, which is cool about this stuff. So then now, we see, the level is saved, but what we can also do is pass that into the hero. We can, you know, where does it need to go? It needs to go into some object in our room, and the hero is the thing doing the most work, so why not just, and we know that there's guaranteed one hero in the room, you know, because there could be many goals, many boxes, many walls, many this, many that. But there's only going to be one hero, so I can pass along, is it called level? Let me just make sure I have it, uh, level number. Okay, make sure I do it right. So I'm going to pass that along into the hero, and of course things are going to break because the hero does not have a constructor that can handle that. So now we can go into the hero class and start tinkering with that. And you go, okay, float x, float y, and then int level. And then down here, I can set up a member variable called level number. Capital, capital instead of lowercase capital. So we get what that is all about, so that, that the character is maintaining that information. So then in hero.cpp, where's hero.cpp? There it is. Hero.cpp, blah, blah, blah. Here, this goes int level number, lowercase. And um, then this would be capital, capital, level number, that's level number. All right, so then there we go. So we set up, at least now the hero knows about the level number. And so what the, the next question, of, of course, is what, what's he going to do about it? So let's figure that out. So the data itself needs to be stored in a text file. So I went ahead and created one and put it in the folder with everybody else, all these files in one place. I call the data.txt, and you can see it down below over here. And so I have basically a very simple layout, unencrypted, just a normal text file. So it's one nine 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 nine. That's how many. That's the best score so far. And just say a huge number of steps. Basically saying we nobody's won the game yet, or no, the game has not. The level has not been uh, solved. Same for two and three. And there's no space. We talked about this earlier. That space can cause some troubles. And so, good, we have everything set up. So now it's just a matter of also, oops, wait a minute, this is not happy here. Why is this not happy? Expected an identifier. Let me see, let me just try to rebuild and see if it cleans itself up. Because that should not happen, right? We didn't do too much here. Compile, compile, succeeded and failed. Okay, good. So I don't know what was wrong with that. So then also here, if I'm going to do level number, I should also keep track of 
best score, and we'll fit, and we'll get that best score from the file. I can spell best score, and so it's starting out, we'll just give it. We'll just say best score. Oops, wrong object here. We'll just say that best score is a huge number, and just something huge. And so now I'm going to create a, a member function, a private member function that opens up the file and figures out, you know, because it matches up the level and then, just, and then right now tells me what the best score is so I can use that while the gameplay is being played. And so, and then we'll close up the file. And then when we win the game, when we beat the level, we'll test the score, the current number of steps against that value. And then if we have to update the file, we'll update the file. So I think that's a pretty good, you know, something pretty good we can do here. So keep coming back to this hero.h and go, now I'm, I need a private function and I'll call void function, I'll call it actually an int function, get best score from level. For level from file. And I don't need to pass in anything because, or actually I guess, well no, we'll just, we'll just leave it. We're just going to leave, we're just going to hard code data.txt as the file and, and the level number is already known. And then we'll just return the best score. So I, we don't need to worry about any of this cool stuff. Okay, so then, so I will call this function from the constructor of the hero.cpp file to set that value up for real. And then say best score. Oh, actually, never mind. Since uh, level number is done right before me, I can actually go ahead and put this in here like that. So the best score will be set in the in the initialization list from that function, which is down here somewhere. There we go. Best level, best score for get best score for level from file. Okay, so then I'll probably need to include F stream because I'm sure almost guaranteed I haven't opened that one yet. Okay, so I've already created the data file, so it's a matter of just saying, okay, I need an input file stream, call it file, and it'll be just data.txt. Oops, something happened there. Okay, if file dot fail equals true, if something failed, then what to do, right? Throw an exception. Actually, no. I don't know. Then maybe just not worry about it, because then, I said, just to say, if there is a file corruption, should I end the whole game? Should the player stop playing just because there's a file corruption altogether? We can argue this. You're just as you know. You're probably more right if you say no. The game should end. But we already have the best score set up. We could just return something and just say, okay, the best score is a huge number. We don't have to stop the whole game. So I'll just return nine 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 something like that. So a huge number, right? Not too big that it can't fit in it. Oops, but not too small. What did I do? I don't even know what I did. Oh, sorry about that. What key did I press? I don't even know. Okay, so then I can return, and then if it comes through, then everything's okay. We're happy. So then now we, now let's progress through the file and try to find what's going on here. So if, uh, so just while, while file.eof uh, equals false, I'm going to need an int value for the level, and I'm going to need an int level for the score, and then I'm going to go, hey, file, put that information into those places. All right, and then it's basically just saying if level is equal to, and now just remembering what the name of our thing is, it's a lot of code we've written there, is equal to our level number. If the input coming from the file is equal to our level, then just say my best score is equal to score. And I guess if you want to, I guess you could return at that point, since there should only be one level, or, or break even now, I don't really want to do that, because if I go through, just like to say here, if the file didn't open, if I couldn't find the, the value, if I couldn't find the level in there, I'll just return the same value. So all of the, you know, all of the pressure valves have been uh, have been laid here to say, if the file doesn't open, just don't worry about it. Put a large number in. If you do find it, that's great, and then we're done. But then, if you can't find it even when the file opens, then we're you know then do what you got to do. So let's see. Let's see what happens if I run this. Do I hit the breakpoint? Oops. What is this? Oh, I got to return a value. Oh, shoot. Uh, ret oh, I forgot. It's just returning score. Okay. So that should do that. Let's see what happened. Let's see, make sure I did this right. So my game's running. I click one. I hit the breakpoint. Score is 99999. So 
just for the sake of this, just to see, let me just change this up a little bit so we can see that each thing worked correctly. Yes, replace that. Oops, okay, hold on. A lot going on here. Let me close down my program. This didn't save because I'm running it at the current moment. Okay, so here we go. And so I click level one. They got scores. Come, score comes out for level one is no one nine 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 nine. Yep, that does it. I do level two. It comes out as two nine 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 nine. And I do level three. And you don't have to watch me click. Just trust me on that. Three nine 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 nine. Yep. So everything is coming out like the way it should. So the file opens. The, if you know what levels one, two, and three get me the correct data information. So I guess if I'm confident in it now, I can set everything back to the large numbers. And then now I'm ready to move on and continue playing the game. And uh, my first step here would be like, okay, the number of, you know, I'll say current steps taken now, and then I'll say best steps taken. And this now I can say steps, and now I can say best score. And then even, and this I could even put an if statement around it. I said if best score is greater than 2,000, because 99999 is just something like just if just pick a large number as long as it's 2,000 or more. I'm sorry, less than 2,000. There, let's just run it and see it, and then we can put the if statement around it. Let me get rid of the breakpoint now that we know it's halfway working. Oops, I got to fix my x y position because that's hilarious. No way anybody can read that. So going back here, oops, going back to my hero down here. Best steps taken. How far down do I need to go? Let's try 35. I don't know exactly. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there it is. Steps taken, best steps taken. And there are my values, 99999. So now I could say if my best score is less than 2,000, show it. So now it won't show it the first time because you never beat the level before. Makes sense, right? So then now it will not show this because my level number is the the number of steps taken is way too high oh yes and i've also changed my levels up if i haven't mentioned it before first level is a peer tutorial level two is the normal level from like the normal first level of the game is this one here the other you know, one where you get 93 steps and then my level three here is also is also this guy here just a completely different level structure and I moved everything over just so this main menu and fix it up later and all that, but looking pretty good for the time being. Okay, so quick game. All right, so now we have this best steps taken, and now it's just a matter of hitting that win condition again. So let's do that. So the first thing I would like to do is to set it up so that my hero stops moving when he beats the level. And so this is part of it here. It's like when I win, they say, remember we have this breakpoint in here. It's easy just to show. Right now, it's just a plain old boring breakpoint, and it should only take me 14 steps or something to beat this level, or even less than that. I don't know. So just beat the level. Here we go. And then now, when it hits that, there's my breakpoint. The computer is smart enough to know that I've won the game, and so I'm going to do something about that. And but the thing is, right now, I could keep walking because there's nothing stopping my progress. So what I'd like to do here is just set up one more member variable, bool, put it down here, and go all you know one game. Or one, yeah, whatever. I'm just gonna call it one game, and of course, it should start out as a false thing because, of course, it's starting out false. So, uh, uh, one game is false. All right. Oh no, no stop that. Okay, thank you. Oh, what semicolon? Forgot the semicolon's not needed there in the initialized place. Okay, so down here, what I can say here. Do all the work, and then just say one game, and then I can say or equals one. Like, what the heck? And or equals, right? So if it's if one game is, is false and one is false, well, or equals will keep it false. But once I've won the game, I or means, you know, if, if something's true, it'll always be true. Something and and true, or something or true will always be true. So this will basically, is like a one-way switch. I can turn it from off to on, but once it's on, I can't turn it back. And so, so even if this is false, you or something with false, you get whatever one game is. But if you want something with true, you get true. So it's, again, it's that one-way switch idea. So what I could do here is say if one game, or actually I could do that. Hmm, what could I do here? If one game, 
put this in the draw event. Let's just start out with something fun here. If one game equals true, print something out. So let's see, what do we want to print? Where do we want to print it? We want to print it near the middle of the screen, I would presume, but I don't know. I'll say level complete or something like that. No clue where it should go just yet, so let's let's just put it down 300 and about 300, somewhere near the middle. And just uh, color white, SF color. What colors have we? The colors look good, white. Right? Now let's just try that, and then two times two, two, two for the scaling. Let's just see. I don't know. Let's just see what it looks like when we beat the level. But again, I can like at the moment I can still move the character around even after I've won the game. Level complete. Hey, looks pretty good. Looks almost done, right? And so again, it knows I've won the game because I have won the game, but I can continue on doing everything I want to do. So let's see. If I move this down 10 pixels and move this over 30 pixels, we'll try it again. Move it over 30 and move it down 10. Okay. So we'll see what that looks like when we get there. And so now, again, to stop his movement, let's see, what are we doing in here in the step event? All this, if, 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 It's a little kludgy, but if I say if one game equals true, return. Because all of this code is just input handling, and I don't want to move anymore if he does it. So now, you know, let's just put it all together now and just do it one more time. See what we get. There we go. 14 steps, level complete, and I can't move anymore, and, and it's a little better centered. Maybe I'll move it over another 30 pixels and move maybe down two. Trying to get it as set well centered as I can and without being too OCD about it. Okay, so the, the character stops moving. The game is one. I could also set an alarm in this case. To say one is, you know, so in this case, if I won, I can set the alarm. And so basically here I can say if one game equals false, because in a moment it will be set to true. So I guess, you know, depending on how you look at this, yeah, so one equals false. Yeah, but if one game, no. Nope. I'm never mind here. I'm trying to if I won the game. Let me just say if if one game and get alarm or just alarm zero because we're gonna need some kind of alarm timer on this is less than or yeah is less than zero. Then do something here. Set up an alarm timer. And set up set alarm set alarm zero and set it up for two seconds, 120 game frame. And so the hero will need a and oh, we already have an on alarm. We I already discussed that earlier. We're gonna need it for something. Where did I put it after all this though? Is it over at the top? Where the heck is this thing? Really? Where is it? Oh, duh, I already have, I'm in it. Oh shoot. Okay, so Alarm zero gets, st oh, okay, yep, oh boy. It's been a long nine hours of work, right? Alarm zero handles the character when he moves from square to square. And alarm, so maybe we could set a different alarm to handle this situation and just say, okay, an alarm one is less than zero, set alarm one to 120, which means now I have to put some code in here. If alarm is equal to zero, do all this fun work all of it, all of it, and then I can say if alarm is equal to one, do something else. So let's see what happens. Let's see if my thought process handles what I think is going to happen. So let's see here. I play the level. Sorry to always have to put you through it. Can't lose it at least. Okay, so there we go. Level complete. Zero, one, two. There it is. Two. You got you got two seconds to see level complete, and then what I can do is go steal, go steal this guy here, right? Take me back to the main menu room. Let's just see, and let's just see if all the all of oh, I need that I need to include that 
room into here. Fade out and change room. All right, let's try it again. Edit this so I can start over from scratch. All right, here we go. So level one. All right. So I win. One, two, fade to black, go back to main menu. Huzzah, right? That's pretty cool. So now the only thing left to do here is to figure out, okay, so what happens if, so say I have to have won the game here, right? So if one game is true, say level complete, and now at this point I could also put in here to say if the number of steps that I've taken is less than the best score, I can just say 30 or 25 or something below that, 357 or something like that, say new new record best new record probably need to move this over a little bit so I'll just try it up originally here so let's see what happens and it should because the best score is horrendous it should know this 14 new record I'll have to move it over quite a bit substantially I'll move it to 430 and so this case here, I could just, you know, we'll test it out later when we get the file working. But if this is true, then I also want to call another private function, set new, uh, well, what did we call the other, what did we call this other function here? Just so I remember here, it was in the hero, I thought it was in the hero. All gets lost in here. Get, get best score for, for blah, 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 blah. And just to keep the naming consistent, I could say, Oops, set new best score for level in file or something like that. And I do not need to pass any information because the number of steps is a number variable. And it just it's just screaming of putting up a fit because it doesn't know what's going on. Uh, doesn't know from earlier. And it doesn't need to return anything like the other one did. Because it's, you know, it just needs to get the job done. So let me one more time go back down here, steal the name, the horse before the cart kind of thing here, and set up a void function that does exactly this. Okay, so then I can basically go steal the code. I keep opening that room up for some reason. I can go steal the code from. Oh, why do I keep why do I keep losing it in here? Hold on, let's see. There it is. Basically, borrow this guy. I'm just say, all right, just start, just to have a nice tidy starting point, and say, okay, this is set the best score for level one file. Okay, so then I am going to open up the text file, and if it fails, okay, just do nothing. But this time I'll put an else in here, or or you know, or a return. Just return back. Otherwise, okay, open the file. And now it's a little different here, right? So like, I'm opening the file for input, but I also want to open the file for output because I'm just changing one value inside of this thing. So, hmm, how to go about doing that, right? So maybe I'll set up, hmm, how do I go about doing this? Just keep, to set up the same file and just keep it simple on my own end. I'll open up the, ten, oh, shoot. I'll just set up a vector of ints and then I'll know the level numbers because everything's going to be sequential order and I'll just say I'll just keep track of scores. And so for the for the moment here, I'm going to open up the text file, I'm going to bring all the information in. And again, this might be overkill, but I've been doing this for 9 hours and just want to get it done. 9 hours for me, I don't know how many hours for you guys. So I have a vector int of scores and for every level that comes in, I get the level, I get the score. I do scores dot pushback on the score and oh, pushback. And so what I could actually do here is say if level is equal to uh, best. I'm saying is if level is equal to what did I call it? Current level. I just it's been a while already. Level number, kind of like before. I guess I could have put this back. I thought about it ahead of time. 
Okay, so if the level is equal to level number, otherwise I'll just push back whatever came in. But this is the chance where I get to say, okay, if the number of steps is less than the best score. So again, there could be, there's better ways to do this. I know it. Oh, and that's score. I guess that's steps. If this, the current score, no, if my, if my steps taken is less than my best score, then I'm going to push back. Is that called steps taken? Is it just steps? Did I have it right the first time? Not my best video. Oh well. But uh, if the number of steps that I took during my level is less than the best score that came in, then I can push back the number of steps I took. Otherwise, I will push back the score, the original score. And if the level isn't even the same, it doesn't much matter, right? And then I don't need to return anything back. Oh, I forgot to close these files off in both of these cases. Shame on me. File close here. File, 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 file. Um, let's see, I put a file close. Yeah, this is bad practice. I, I would clean this up for sure. But it works. I, you should never have more than one file closed, right? So make sure the file is closed before returning back so the file doesn't hang on you and, and stay open. So let's see, file fail. If it didn't, you don't need to close it if it didn't work. But if I'm in a loop and I'm going to return, I should close it. And if I fall through, I'm going to return something, I should close it too. So if this fails, I don't need to worry about returning it. But in this case, this loop will play out. So let's run the game one more time now and see what happens. I hit that breakpoint. I'm going to close off the file when I win. Okay. So let's see. I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. I win the game. 14 steps in. So the, fi the file's already done, right? So I go, okay, now what? Oh, file. There we go. It does it. So now what have I got for me? I probably have to reopen this because it, it should have done it, but it didn't It didn't update the file. Hmm. But it didn't update the file because that's just the vector, right? The file is closed, oh, yeah. but the whole thing is what does the vector show? So let me win it real quick. Let me win this real quick and just make sure that the vector holds the correct values. And so now scores is my vector. It holds three values, 14, 9999, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, and 99999. Yep, that's exactly right. Hmm. Oh, okay, so then there's my, oops. <laughs> Everything's going wrong right now. Hold on, let's just say delete new room, change room. Did that crash for a reason, or did that crash just because I ruined everything by hitting breakpoints when I shouldn't have hit breakpoints. Let me try this one more time. We're reaching the end of complexity. I got off. Come on. I thought I'd get rid of that. Returns back. So I, it must have been, it just must have been a situation where the breakpoint caused a timing issue. At least I'll go with that for now. Let's try this one more time on a fresh approach here. I'll take this level first because I know how to beat it. It just takes a little bit of time, Oops. so I won't have the best record. And then it's just a matter of replacing the file. Saving it back. New record, 99 steps, return back, no crash. Okay, so don't know what that was all about, and until I recreate it, I'll keep it in the back of my mind that, it, that that is a possibility. Okay, so now that the file closed out, now I can basically steal this guy from before. We know the file exists, so I'm just going to open it for writing. Oops, file.close. Open it again. Oops, I thought I took care of the... Oh, I'll just write it again. STD, uh, OF stream. This time it's an output file stream. I'll just call it out this time instead of file since I already def defined it earlier. Data.txt hard coded. And so in this case, for ever, so int i equals zero, i is less than 
uh, scores dot size plus plus i. Oops. All right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put i plus one into the file. Put a space. Put the space first. Then put i i plus one. So it starts from level one. Put another space and then put scores at the i value in there and call it a day. What is it not like? Oh, oh wow. I am really off my rocker here. There we go. For i equals zero, i is less than scores that size plus plus i. Put this in. File close. Return nothing back. Should that do it, right? So i plus one, then scores of i because it's one based for the level number and it's zero based for the actual the vector that's holding the information. So now if I did this right, since the file is maintained now, let me just ruin this a little bit on purpose. So the first time through, I beat the game with 28 steps, new record, go back to main menu, no crash, good. And then now I open it up one more time and it says, there it is. Current steps taken zero, best steps taken 18. And so now I can beat it for real the 14 step way. And you go, yep, all right, new record. Go back one more time. Try it again. And since this is a file, this will be forever, right? So this is the cool part about this, is that I've got this going for me now. I've got 14 level complete. I didn't beat it. If you wanted to set it up so that you could say, like, tied record or something, I'm not going to do that. And, of course, a different level, I haven't beaten that yet. So that record is not, that rec you know, that value inside of the file has not been modified. But again, I go back one more time into this, or I can even quit the game run it one more time. Holy cow, that was brutal. That buzzing. And then I go in here, since it's a file saving that information, the 14 should be there, right? And it is. My best steps taken is 14. So good. We have, other than just testing out the other two levels, and the level three would be, I'm hoping, a little bit faster just to try it out. So I go, okay, I'll beat, let's see, I'll beat this as fast as I can. I think we got it, right? And, and then the only step remaining is to put that information into the button class. Revise the button class so the button has a button can show that too. Oh, save me that effort. Let's just presume it works for the moment and the time being. And then we'll come back and fix this up and try it again for final tests once things are done here. So I'm just going to presume that the level data is good for all three levels. And you can see it saved down here now. And now we're ready to move on to the button class. As much as the kids these days love watching people play games, I don't think anyone wants to watch Bradley Sword push blocks around. So, so here we go. Final step, just to prove I did the work here. New record, 94 steps. And so just to just quickly go in, let's try level one again, make sure it worked out right. So level one gets the 14. And then now level three, let's just make sure level three gets... 94, which is what we are expecting. So good. It's storing that information in the file because every time the level starts up, it opens the file to pull the information down. And so it looks like that is complete. So for real now, let's go in and fix up these buttons so that they print out what they're supposed to print out for each of the specific levels. So what it comes down to, I'm in my main, main menu now, is that these button classes are very, you know, say they're they're generic. They're still not even as generic as they could be. We've seen a couple times with the graphics and the styles, nothing centered, all these little extra details that we would need to to pretty up and make this thing as flexible as possible. But definitely printing a second bit of text is cost more more custom than this will ever, ever, ever be. So what we're gonna do here in our final step is to override because the button, the button class itself is virtual. And so, and I don't need to have this as a virtual destructor. I, I probably should anyway, because the parent is virtual. So, you know, I might as well just throw virtual. Or maybe it won't let me. What's going on? Nope, it's okay. I hate when IntelliSense does that, of course. So, but, but all I'm doing is I'm going to take over, and I'm going to pass in one extra little bit of information. And that little bit of information is what level 
is tied to you that, for that specific button. And then just like we did before, open up the file, pull the information down from there for that specific uh, button, and then somewhere else on, in, in the button, maybe down a little below and to the right or something, print out the best score. So that's the idea here. So looking at all this stuff here, looking at this, 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 this is, okay, what is diff, where does everything, this is all the same. So all this other stuff needs to, all these other things need to be parameters, but once you get to here, you can cut it off. And so we only need to, well, we're only going to need to pass in one, two, three, four, five, and then add our sixth for the level. We're only going to need to pass in six things to the button, and then we'll defer over for the other stuff here. So, so let's, so what have we got? We have button. So we have SFML object, button derives from that, and then we're going to have our custom button derived from this specific, or our, our, our custom button derived from SFML button. So I'm going to create one more .h file, new item. I'm going to call it, oh, got to get out of here and move over. Main menu button .h. All right. And so this one, class main menu button, derives from public SFML button instead of just object. So include SFML button.h so that we can get access to that. Public, private. All right. Again, constructor-wise, say we're all the extra stuff comes. All this stuff comes for free. You know that's the the glory of this. So let me find let me find SML button dot h here. I need all this. I need to pass all this stuff along. Holy cow! Right. So I do need a constructor, as I was saying. So main menu button. But again, I don't have to pass in all of that. I do need an XY position in space. I do need an X. I need to know the sprite resource. I need to know the callback function. I need to know the text. I need to know the off color and the on color. I need to know what font. And that's an optional parameter. I still have to pass all that information up, but again, I but it's pretty much a given at this point that the off color, on color, and basic resource are going to be supplied. Are just going to be automatic. I did all that hard work. Undo. Okay, there we go. So now let me set this thing up. Oops. Let me set this thing up in the .cpp file. And so let's pull it open so we can see it. Save. Where's main menu button .cpp now? Main menu button .cpp. There it is. Holy cow! Look at all that and all its glory. Oops. Why won't it? That's weird. Why won't it let me go to the right with it? Hmm. Is it because of the stupid data text file? Well, how do I get it? Yep, it's because of that stupid data text file. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's move this file over. Nope, not that file. Oh man, where did all my files go? Voxels game room. Oh geez, Louise, where did it go? SFML, where is where's my button? Main menu button dot CPP. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, there we go. And so what I can do calling up the chain here is I can say I need to call SFML button and I need to pass in, I got two parameters, look at that, I need to pass in the X, I need to pass in the Y, I need to pass in callback, I need to pass in, oops, I guess, I'm sorry, resource. Oh, it's, and that's where things are coming in here. It's using the same resource, main menu button. It's always going to use main menu button. Okay, and then call back, and then, so that's one, two, three, four parameters, then the string. Let's see, where is it? Just make sure sprite resource, one, two, sprite resource, call back, then the text. Okay, and then this is where I can go back to here and go back to the CPP file for main menu room here and steal these guys because this is. I guess you can see it, so I can explain it better here. These two guys are the same for all the buttons, right? So I can just go ahead and pop that in as if nothing ever happened. Okay. But then I also need to attach to the main menu button, as I was discussing here. Coming back here, I do... God, where does it all go? There we go. I also need to supply... 
So I can get rid of this in, nope, that's a 7 mil button, don't touch that one, Brad. Okay, I do need to supply the int that tells me what level number it is. And so, there we go, that ruins this. And so int level number comes in. And so now what I can do, I don't think I need to take over update. I don't think I need to take over draw. Uh, but I do need a, uh, actually, we get font from button, right? We already get the font, so we don't have to worry about the font. But the only thing is I need to maintain, I do need to maintain the text to draw, right? And that's what this say, text, It's that's the text that gets drawn as the button. But in this case, I want to draw like best score is. But I need to maintain the best, whatever that best score is. So that needs, I need to be able to take an import and take this level number here, take the level number as it comes in and convert this to best score for that specific level from five. And then that's pretty much it. And it'll work the same for all three button classes because It'll just find the different value inside of that file. So coming back down to here, changing this up, maximizing this, instead of SFML button now, I will use main menu button. So that breaks, I guess that doesn't break here because I still get access to it, but I want to change this up. Is it working yet? Oh wait, hold on. Main menu button, main menu button. I don't want the no, sorry. SFML SFML button is fine for the quit game button, but main menu button are the other three. And so for main menu button, this is gonna break because I don't need any of this extra stuff anymore. I just need a one. Let me just how many parentheses? Any two parentheses here. Alright. Level two, level three. And so we can probably run it now. And that's the fun of inheritance and polymorphism, right? Like these buttons are working. They're working just fine. That information is still stored in these in these inherited objects. This S the SFML button is just the base class for this. And so now it's just a matter of drawing. We do need to take over the draw event. But we first, but we still have to convert. So let's just let's prove this is working. Oops. Hold on, this one, where did this go wrong here? Hold on. Variable is uninitialized. Best score is uninitialized. Oh, actually warns you about that now? Thank you. That is pretty cool. Okay, so let's just say, I'll add that here, because it is a member variable. Oops. And so I'll make it a big number here. And that's because, of course, main menu button. Now I have this variable. It was, it's a nice warning. Let's see, will it finally, will it finally stop warning me? Let's see, rebuild. Oh, oh God. Build, rebuild. Succeeded. It's still there though. Always an un yeah, I did. I totally did. Oh, it finally once. Jeez, I hate when that does it. Okay, but I totally need to take over the draw event so I can draw what the button normally does and then draw my text on top of it. So that's the that's the end goal here. So uh, I'm gonna say I need a I need a virtual void draw override and I need to define it so, and then oh, come on. there we go define it put it over here draw. And I need to call my parent, SFML button, to draw the button part. And then I'm just going to see, is there anything open right now where I can steal it very easily? Steal the, steal the drawing of the text. Let's see, that would be, that would be an SFML button.cpp. So down here I can say, I want to draw the font on top of it. I guess I could use the draw color, like I said, draw color equals, I could use this. So it draws it the same color. Hmm. Let's see, is inaccessible. Off color, on color, 
and font are all private when it comes to the stuff. And this is the fun of, you know, testing this code out as you go. And so like the sfmlbutton.c.h file, sfmlbutton.h, coming back to here, all of this stuff is private. So maybe, so maybe I just want to go ahead and make this protected. The other way around is this, and so all of that protected fixes all of this stuff up. And so to, just to change the text, just to say, okay, x plus 2, y plus 2, draw text. How about I just draw, hey, just to see what it looks like with the draw color. And this time it doesn't have to be exciting, just 1, 1. And there we go. There we have hi there, hi there, hi there, drawing on top of everything, right? So it's and it, it's not in the best position, but it's also drawing in the correct color and all that stuff. And so now it's a matter of just opening up that file. So I say, so like this, say if, oh, put this together here, if best score is less than 2,000, do all this stuff. Print high there and say best score. Oh my goodness. And just for the moment, just print it out. So the way I have my game in just in the current moment, oops. Hmm. It's not printing anything anymore. I thought it would. X plus two, Y plus two, best score, draw color one, one. Hmm. Oh, because it's not, I haven't opened the file. Duh. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> I'm just getting ahead of myself. So the final step here, once we can convert the level number from the file and put it in for best score, then two of the three, at least in my game right now, will print out best scores because I have beaten the level once and the other one won't until I go in and beat the level. So let me go steal the code from, uh, where's that code again? That code is in the main menu. It's in the hero, right? Hero.cpp. The code for opening the file. Get best score from file. Yep, all this code here. I can just, for the moment, just to get it done, get just to get this working. Steal all this. Oops, go back to main menu button.cpp. Pop it in here. And say, okay, open up a file. I need to include file string. Or I'm sorry, F string. Okay, open the data file. If it fails, don't do anything, just return. And then if it's while the file is false, get the stuff. And if the level is equal to the level number, so let's see, what did we call it over here? We called it what, level number lowercase, lowercase. Then I'm just going to say best score is equal to score. And then again, now I got to make sure I can, uh, this time I'll just break out of the loop. And if not, I'll just return, or sorry, I'll just say best, I won't even do anything to best score because it's already been initialized to 99999. So there's no reason to worry with it. So it opens the file up. Oh, I got to do the file close. Opens the file up, finds the level, takes, steals the score from it, jams it into the best score attribute here. And then if it's better than, 2,000, less than 2,000, it'll print itself out. And it does, best score, nothing, best score. And so now I just need to add a two string function for this. And then I'll take this for best score. And then now it should print that out. And there it is, best score 14, best score 94 for each of the levels. And again, level two has not been defeated yet. So because that score is 99999 sitting in there, nothing gives. So my final step is where do I, how far do I move these buttons over in space, X and Y, to make this thing work? So two, say 200, and I'll say 130, 120. Oops, I think I have it reversed here. Let's just see, getting closer, looking pretty good there. I'll move it, move the Y down five more, move the, the X over 10 more. All right, getting a little better. So now I'll do this, I'll move down, I'll move the Y down three more and the X over 40 more. Let's see what that does. 
We want to make sure we can handle a three-digit number, and we can. Pretty sure of it anyway. Let's see. Let's beat level two with 100 or more and see what it looks like. Six hundred eleven hundred eleven steps. New record. Go back. And there it is. One hundred and eleven steps is the new best score. Ninety four fourteen. And now, say so just to prove it one last time. Play this game one last time, and then we're done. This game. I mean, there's nothing more to it, right? We can win the game. We can escape out by clicking the main menu. We can't pull on the boxes, so there's, you know, that's the only way out is when you don't do something like that. Uh, keeps track of the best scores overall for the entire time the game is existing and you've played it, since it keeps a file. New record. Comes back. 95 steps. 95 steps. And so there it goes. Oh. Congratulations, you guys have made it the whole way. It's done. There's nothing more for us to do. Again, every level, mouse over. We've got fade in, fade out for everything that comes and goes. The quit game immediately quits the game. This comes up here again, so I fade out, fade in, beat the level, keeps track of the score. 14 there, level 2, 95 comes up. Everything's good. Go back to main menu, fade out. Level 3, 94 is the best score, so that comes up there. Every level is tied correctly. Go back to main menu, quit the game. It's done. We're done. So <laughs> It's done. There's nothing more to do other than tidy up maybe the graphics and change some things up and just whatever else you wanted to add. But how many different files? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different SFML object types. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different types that are game level. So 20 different object types working together. How many different files? We have text files, we have PNG files all over the place, a data file for the actual hard, you know, with, you know .txt for the room data, .txt for the high score data, PNG files for everything else, and all the code that goes with it. As crazy as some of this code, some of this code was pretty simple, some of this code was pretty darn difficult. But you have it. And the cool part is if you get rid of all the engine or the, all the game code, you have the engine. You have, you know, you have the ability. Anything that can do voxel type stuff, you don't have to write any new code. But this is, you know, but this is how engines start. You, you create a very small game with it. See where the kinks are and can continue to add. Try to figure out. Learn. I must have made this engine 20 times by now over the years. And uh, it's better over time because it's just I learned the mistakes of the past. And so I hit that, I, we hit that wall earlier with the room event. I add an object while the game is playing, and then, and then we get an exception because the iterators get, you know, unbalanced and just throw an exception. So these things happen. That's, you know, so maybe, say, do you appreciate game bugs more now? You know, that's the big question. Like, when Fallout, the next Fallout or whatever, the next game comes out, and there's six trillion bugs in it. Like, do you, do you give them a pass? Because now that you know how much work goes into just making voxel, or do you think they're still professionals? They should do their job, right? So there's no way you're ever going to fix every bug. I don't know how many bugs are in this game. We'd have to test it to find out. You know, get some testers, just pay some people or get some people to play my beta and tell me everything they like and don't like about it so we can move on to bigger and better things. So that pretty much covers everything. So 18 steps was what it took, and we're all done. Congrats again. My name is Bradley Sword. Swordb at cod.edu is my email address. Comment me there. Send me some constructive criticism or praise. Hopefully, some more praise since we got this thing working. Nine or eight or nine or ten hours of work. Um, you can always comment down below here on YouTube as well. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, everybody. Congrats. Have a good one. Take it easy. Have a good day.